By watching this short video, you will be able to prove to yourself that the Bible is repulsive. The Bible is so repulsive that it has no place in a modern civilized society. Example 1. The vast majority of Americans believe that God exists, that Jesus is his son, and that God himself gave us the Bible and the Ten Commandments. In fact, Supreme Court Justice Scalia has said that 99% of Americans believe in the Ten Commandments. He has also said, what the commandments stand for is the direction of human affairs by God. If 99% of Americans believe in the Ten Commandments, then how can the Bible be repulsive? It's because they've never actually read the Bible. Let's take the fourth commandment as an example. It says, Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. For six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. This sounds simple enough. God has commanded that no one will work on the Sabbath day. But let's look at reality in America. Walmart is open on the Sabbath, and so is Target. Best Buy is open on the Sabbath, and so is Circuit City. Home Depot is open on the Sabbath, and so is Lowe's. In fact, millions of businesses in America have employees working on the Sabbath. Even Family Christian Stores has employees working on the Sabbath. So this is a clear-cut situation. God has told us not to work, yet we work. What should we do with everyone who breaks the fourth commandment? Here's the fascinating thing. In the Bible's book of Exodus, the same book that contains the Ten Commandments, the Bible tells us what we should do with everyone who breaks the Fourth Commandment. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whoever does any work on the Sabbath day must be put to death. That's right. The Bible demands the death penalty for tens of millions of Americans. Should we line these tens of millions of Americans up and shoot them? Should we put them in giant gas chambers? I think we can all agree that the thought of killing tens of millions of innocent Americans is repulsive. It is repulsive. And make no mistake about it, the Bible really means what it says. It fully intends to be this repulsive. In Isaiah 40, verse 8, the Bible says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. The Bible says the same thing in 1 Peter 1, verse 24 and 25. And in Psalms 19, verse 7, the Bible says, The law of the Lord is perfect. Perfect. Since the laws of the Bible are perfect, they should never change. Do you believe that we should kill millions of innocent people because they work on the Sabbath? If not, do you want a book this repulsive to be quoted in public? Do you want it read to children? Do you want it used in our courts of law? Example 2. The Bible wants us to kill most Americans. For example, the first commandment says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. What are we supposed to do with everyone who doesn't believe in God? We are supposed to kill them. Deuteronomy chapter 17 says, Take the man or woman who has done this evil deed to your city gate and stone that person to death. Deuteronomy chapter 13 says that if a town doesn't believe in God, you must attack that town and completely destroy all its inhabitants, as well as all the livestock. And Leviticus chapter 24 says, Anyone who blasphemes the name of the Lord must be put to death. The entire assembly must stone him. The Bible is extremely clear on this. We must kill everyone who does not believe in God. Now, if you are a thoughtful, intelligent person, you're starting to realize something. The law of the Lord is not perfect. It is repulsive. Example 3 is really simple. All who curse their father or mother must be put to death. So is example 4. If a man commits adultery with another man's wife, with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress must be put to death. And so is example 5. If a man lies with a man as one lies with a woman, both of them have done what is detestable. They must be put to death. According to the Bible, we need to kill tens of millions of innocent Americans. Plain and simple, this is repulsive. 
the idea that people would walk around carrying a book that demands the death of tens of millions of innocent people is repulsive. Here's another example of the Bible's idiocy. Rebellious teenagers should all be killed as well. Here's what the Bible says. If someone has a stubborn and rebellious son who will not obey his father and mother, who does not heed them when they discipline him, then his father and mother shall say to the elders of his town, This son of ours is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey us. He is a glutton and a drunkard. Then all the men of the town shall stone him to death. Example 7 comes straight from Jesus. In Matthew 18, verses 7 through 9, Jesus says, If your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to enter life maimed or crippled than to have two hands or two feet and to be thrown into eternal fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out and throw it away. This passage is repulsive on at least three different levels, but let's focus on the first one. Jesus is an idiot. Cutting off your hand or gouging out an eye accomplishes nothing. If you are having a problem with unproductive behaviors, what you need to do is talk with a counselor or see a therapist. Self-amputation is absurd and repulsive. Example 8. The Bible's absolute sexism is well known and it is repulsive. Here are two examples. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to acquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home, for it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Let a woman learn in silence with all submissiveness. I permit no woman to teach or to have authority over men. She is to keep silent. We can find dozens of verses that are just as sexist throughout the Bible. The Bible's sexism is both ridiculous and repulsive. Example 9. The Bible fully supports slavery. In fact, the Bible has been used in many cases, including the American Civil War, as an authoritative justification of slavery. Here are three examples. Your male and female slaves are to come from the nations around you. From them you may buy slaves. You may also buy some of the temporary residents living among you and members of their clans born in your country, and they will become your property. You can will them to your children as inherited property and can make them slaves for life. Now look at this. If a man beats his male or female slave with a rod and the slave dies as a direct result, he must be punished. But he is not to be punished if the slave gets up after a day or two, since the slave is his property. In the New Testament, we find this. Bid slaves to be submissive to their masters and to give satisfaction in every respect. They are not to be refractory nor to pilfer, but to show entire and true fidelity. As you can see, the Bible is extremely clear on this. Buying and selling slaves is fine. Beating slaves is fine. Slaves are to show entire and true fidelity. If you are a normal, intelligent person, you are extremely clear on something else. The entire idea of slavery is repulsive. Example 10. The Bible is riddled with repulsion. Take, for example, this verse. Anyone who is captured will be run through with a sword. Their little children will be dashed to death right before their eyes. Or what about this? They shall fall by the sword, their little ones shall be dashed in pieces, and their pregnant women ripped open. Or this. Kill every male among the little ones, and kill every woman who has known man by lying with him. But all the young girls who have not known man by lying with him, keep alive for yourselves. You have probably gotten the picture by now. The Bible is repulsive. You have seen 10 graphic examples of repulsion in this short video. You can find hundreds of verses like these throughout the Old and New Testaments. We currently use the Bible throughout American society. We do that in large part because most Americans have never read the Bible and have no idea how disgusting it is. We read from this book at weddings and funerals. We force people to put their hands on this book in court. We find copies of the Bible in nearly every hotel room in America. But now you know the truth. 
The Bible demands that we kill everyone who works on the Sabbath. The Bible commands us to kill teenagers who drink too much. The Bible empowers us to enslave people of other nations. The Bible commands that we oppress women and kill people who happen to be homosexual. A book 